I have had acne for over a decade. I wish I could say that my acne hasn't impacted my self-esteem, but I wanna be honest, it has. I've gone years not looking people directly in the eye, avoiding having direct sun on my face, changing where I'm sitting at a dinner table because I feel like the lighting's making my acne look worse. It really has been a massive challenge for me. And this is the first time in my life that I think I've had naturally clear skin. But I want to tell you guys about this journey I've been on and the things that have really worked for me. I have had acne for over a decade. That is crazy to say, but I was thinking about it. And truly I have had some form of acne for the better part of 10 years. And this is the first time in my life that I think I've had naturally clear skin. I've obviously tried a number of things and I've had periods of time where my skin has been clearer, and it's not 110% clear right now. I have acne scars and maybe like one or two actives, but this is probably the clearest I've seen my skin in legitimately 10 years. I wish I could say that my acne hasn't impacted my self-esteem, but I wanna be honest, it has. I've gone years not looking people directly in the eye, avoiding having direct sun on my face, uh, changing where I'm sitting at a dinner table because I feel like the lighting's making my acne look worse. Um, even quitting my YouTube channel. That was largely because of my acne and I couldn't face seeing my face up close every single day. Um, it really has been a massive challenge for me and definitely something I've learned a lot from and I've gained a lot of strength from. Um, but I want to tell you guys about this journey I've been on and the things that have really worked for me. I have legitimately done everything and anything to try to solve my acne over the years. And I'm gonna tell you all of them and I'm not re recommending, I am not recommending any of these things that I have tried in my 20s. Because if you think about it, I first started struggling with acne when I was so young and I was in such a different place and I was so desperate to get it off my face. And I'm sure any of you listening who have had acne can relate. So. In college, I developed a tanning bed addiction because it was the only thing that truly cleared my skin. The second I stopped, the acne would come back. I believe I was just drying my skin out to the point where the acne would disappear over and over again. But ultimately, I just ended up increasing my oil production and causing a new slew of issues. I was also on birth control. The second my acne got bad, I was put on birth control. I think I've been on like four different types of birth control in the past. You know, some of them cleared the acne more than others, but ultimately wish I had never done that as well. I was on a number of antibiotics. I remember after I had to drop out of school and move home, my acne was at, at its absolute worst. And now looking back, I can kind of see why. But I remember going to the dermatologist and just being put on so many different antibiotics and... Ultimately, I think that just made everything worse because as we all know, that can contribute to a really unhealthy gut. I tried spironolactone. I was on spironolactone for, I want to say four years and I tried different doses, um, higher, lower. You know, I found at some points it impacted my motivation at the gym, at work. It really was a surface level drug that just lowered my testosterone but didn't attack the root cause. I tried keto diets, I tried getting in the sun, I tried facials, I tried laser, I tried AlviClear. The only thing I never did was Accutane which I am so grateful for and you know I might get shiz for this but I feel like Accutane is pretty glorified nowadays especially on TikTok. I know there are some really big content creators out there who speak about their success with Accutane and I'm, I'm happy for them. I'm glad that worked, but I think we're not discussing the impact it's having on our inner health and I'm not sure the people using it are realizing the havoc it's wreaking on our internal systems, not to mention if you're drinking on top of that. It just makes me cringe to think about. Um, and now knowing the reasons I had acne I'm so happy I didn't take Accutane because I know it would have just made everything worse. And it's kind of promoted as this magic pill. 
but it's really putting a heavy load on your liver and can affect long-term vision. I mean, imagine taking something that's going to affect your long-term vision. I just think the long-term health implications of Accutane are not worth it. But anyway, that's a discussion for another day. And if you have taken Accutane and seen success, then I'm happy for you. It just wasn't the path that I chose. So let's talk about what I did to clear my skin. For the first time in my life right now, my face is not covered in painful acne. I feel like I can see my face again. It's not perfect, but wow, it feels so good. I feel like I can breathe. I feel like I can see my face. I feel like me again and I can look people in the eye. Not only that, but my lab work has improved night and day to what it was. I killed the candida and bacterial overgrowth in my body. I feel amazing. My hormones my hormones are rebalancing. So this is going to be a very in-depth breakdown of everything that I've been doing to get to where I am right now. You might want to grab a pen and paper because this is quite detail-oriented. You may hear me bring up my doctor slash naturopath. She's a blood chemist. I'm not quite sure what to call her. My guardian, my guardian angel is one thing I might say, but her name's Emily Morrow. She helped me a ton during this journey and I do plan on bringing her on the show at a later date to discuss the lab work in more detail. There are certain medical terms and explanations that I'm just not going to do justice. So if you want to work with Emily, you can actually order lab work on ClearStem right now. This is not sponsored. I just want you guys to have a, an accessible option if you do want to get your lab work done. If you go on the ClearStem website, you can order lab work and Emily will be going through that and making suggestions for you because lab work is so, so important. Um, but anyway, if you hear me reference her, I will be bringing her on and there's certain things that she can explain in a way that I cannot because I'm not a medical professional. We're going to do this by steps, guys. And this is going to be detailed and it is going to be slightly overwhelming. But trust me, it is so worth it. And the one thing I would say about acne is be grateful that your body is showing you something's wrong because I think so many people go through life having internal issues and underlying problems that they are simply not aware of until they're 50 years old and something horrible happens. So be grateful that your skin is telling you something's wrong. Step one, discover the internal problem. The root cause. I would recommend finding a naturopath or a holistic clinic where they can prescribe lab work or go on clear stem and order yourself some lab work. I did a number of tests at the beginning that I have used as a reference point throughout this journey. I did a Dutch test for hormones. I did blood work. I checked vitamin deficiencies. I did a stool test for my microbiome, aka a poop test. Real-time lab mycotoxin testing, which is for mold. You can also test for heavy metals and bacterial overloads. One thing I have learned through this journey is that everything is connected and I didn't realize that going into it. I think when I first started this journey, I thought, oh, I have a hormonal imbalance. I have PCOS. My testosterone is high. My other hormones are imbalanced, etc., etc. But the question is why? There are no isolated issues in the body, in my opinion, unless you have an injury or something of that nature. If your hormones are off, there is a reason why. Hormonal issues start somewhere. So I knew from my tests that my testosterone was high, my progesterone was low, and I had poor estrogen clearance. But this isn't a diagnosis, it's just a symptom. And I found out through other tests why that might be. Um, healthy hormones start in the liver and we could see that my liver enzymes were overloaded they were high and then we went on a full investigation as to why that was and that's how we found underlying infections mold heavy metals bacteria overgrowth which is something that so many people have and that can show in different symptoms you know some people have gut issues some people have acne some people have hair loss, whatever it may be, but there's always an underlying issue. The gut test showed me signs of bacterial overgrowth, also known as SIBO. I also had staph and strep and candida. 
I want to give you guys more details on that, but I don't want to speak from a place of, um, you know, I'm not a medical professional and I think Emily can do it justice, but I had bacterial overgrowth, which was definitely contributing to the acne. When I did blood work, I had low platelets, which is a sign of long-standing and ongoing infection. I had low cholesterol, which can be caused by mycotoxins, also known as fungus, aka candida, which by the way, guys, I think it's a myth that many of us believe that high cholesterol is the worst case scenario. Low cholesterol is also not good because it impacts so much in our body. I had high creatinine, which is elevated by heavy metals and excess protein. And metals are also common for stressing the kidneys, which is something I've been working on. My liver, the enzymes were elevated. And one of the liver's main roles is to help regulate the balance of sex hormones, thyroid, cortisone, and adrenal hormones. I had signs of chronic infection and stress and other indications of heavy bacteria and fungus. So, (laughs) with that said as someone who was living a super healthy lifestyle I mean that was like my whole life my whole life was eating clean exercising saunaing you guys know I'm health obsessed and to see that my lab work was this way was so shocking to me and there can be a number of reasons that this is the case it could be the fact that I lived in my sorority house six years ago and there was malt that I was breathing in every day it could be the fact that I was getting coffees out and about and they weren't cleaning out their machines or the coffee beans were moldy mold is so common as is bacteria and I think just by doing frequent lab work we can catch it early and I have learned so much through this process about how to get rid of things like that so with that said let's move on to supplements okay this might be overwhelming guys but it was a huge part of my healing journey. Before I get into it, I would recommend ordering a large organizer on Amazon. I have shown it in my story a bunch of times and I will link mine in the description of this podcast. It's pink and I think it's a very um, popular organizer with senior citizens because they do take a lot of pills and things like that. There's a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and I organize by morning, lunch, and dinner. It makes it so easy. I refill it every two weeks and that's how I stay on top of my supplement game. And you can also pop out the individual days, which is super helpful. So I was already on certain supplements for my general health. I was on fish oil, zinc, vitamin D, bloom greens, obviously, which are all an essential part of the healing process and all supplements that I kept in my routine. So that should be your ground level basic supplement regime but I also added in certain herbal supplements to help fight the infections in my body you almost need to think of your infections as an injury we need to treat the injury all of the supplements I took were prescribed by my naturopath for my specific infections my husband Greg is now working with Emily and he has different infections therefore he's taking different supplements so I do want to say take this with a grain of salt but I do want to list out some of the supplements I took because a lot of you were asking so first things first something called Cirque Tonic which has selenium and molybdenum again I'm not a medical professional so I don't know how to say that word okay this was a big one that I've been taking from the beginning golden thread supreme which is for bacteria toxins and parasites I also started having liquid glutathione and I also started injecting myself with glutathione every single week. Actually, Greg was injecting me because that's kind of scary. You can also do it through IV. Um, Glutathione was something that showed up low on my blood work and I've continued doing that because I think it really helped my skin. Shisandra Supreme, which is for the liver and infections. I was also taking PC Body Bio, which is for the cell membrane to support exporting mycotoxins and metals. I actually take that in liquid form now. Gastro Digest, which is great for digestion, obviously along with my Bloom Greens. And now I also take black cumin oil, a tablespoon a day for parasites. Something you can order on Amazon really easily right now is Spore Powder. Um, it's a red and black bottle. I will try to link that in the description as well for you guys, but that's something I still take every day. 
Camu Camu, C-A-M-U, which is a form of vitamin C. Elysium, which is one of the supplements I was taking for infections. Astragalus Supreme and Morinda Supreme. So again, Emily will describe these in more detail when she comes on the show, but I wanted to give you guys some pointers of what I used. Now let's move on to food. My favorite, favorite topic because I think food is medicine and I think you can do so much with food. And I would say diet has been a huge part of clearing my skin. I thought I was eating in a way before that was gonna clear my skin. Turns out there were things I was doing daily that were probably contributing to my acne. So let's go through. First things first, I would say you can't just out supplement a bad diet. You can take all the supplements I listed and do all the things, but if you're eating poorly, you're not gonna see progress. So the supplements have to go along with a clean diet that works for your body. The first thing I did was I switched out the oils I was cooking in. So I switched from olive oil and avocado to only ghee, grass-fed butter or tallow. I still use olive oil cold on salads, but I never, never cook with it. Emily will go into the science of this, but basically what I gathered is that heating those oils will make them unstable and they can create the wrong type of long chain fatty acids that disrupt the structure of the cell membrane. So those oils aren't really designed to be heated up, whereas butter, ghee and tallow are more fat stable and able to be cooked in or even something like bacon grease. So now I pretty much only use ghee or tallow. Actually, yeah, I only cook in ghee or tallow Even when I'm traveling, I make sure that I have access to that because I really, really don't want to eat things that are cooked in oil, especially canola oil. You guys know how I feel about that. It's highly inflammatory. So when I go out to eat and I order a steak, I will be annoying and say, hey, do you know what they cook in? Um, Actually, I recently went to Sonoma for a wedding and they were cooking the steak in duck fat, which I was so pleased about because that's quite rare. Most places use vegetable oil and it was delicious. So anyway, I highly recommend switching. I know it sounds scary. Ghee is amazing. We all know butter is amazing and tallow tastes really good too. So if you are avoiding dairy, go for the tallow. On the topic of dairy, I definitely have been avoiding dairy and gluten this entire time. I was already gluten and dairy free prior because I'd heard that would help with acne. Um, I dabbled with raw dairy after having my episode with Paul Saladino. I was desperate to try and incorporate raw kefir. I did a tablespoon a day and I just found it was making my acne red and itchy. So I don't think I'm healed enough at this point to incorporate dairy yet, but hopefully I will one day. I also limited the amount of nuts I was eating. I switched to coconut milk rather than almond. One thing I found is that when you really take a look at everything you eat in a day, especially if you're healthy, there are a lot of nuts in health foods. So a lot of us drink almond milk throughout the day. There's nuts in protein bars, almond butter. If you really take a look, there's nuts in a lot of things and they can be inflammatory if you're eating them in excess. So I started watching how many nuts I was eating and really decreasing that. There's also almond flour in a lot of healthy desserts. So just keep an eye out for that. I started drinking spearmint tea, which is really good for testosterone, lowering it, which was my issue. Also dandelion and milk thistle for liver health. I started incorporating three cherries a day for my kidneys. I know that sounds crazy, but I have found that cherries spike my blood sugar so I always ate them right after breakfast so after I had some fats and protein and also I didn't have too many of them but those are really good for kidney health I started mixing chlorophyll drops in my greens every single day um, because those are good for platelets I was a bit skeptical about chlorophyll in the past. You may have heard me say that, but it was something I was doing every day. I don't do that anymore, but on my healing journey, I very much was. I was also drinking warm lemon water with a pinch of salt every day to cleanse the liver. That was before I ate or drank anything else. This one's interesting, but I think highly effective and I've recommended it to other girls in the office who have been struggling with various things raw garlic and pumpkin seeds for parasites and bacteria. So garlic is an ancestral ingredient that people have used over the years for illness and infection. 
what I ended up doing was getting pre-minced garlic from the grocery store. If you go to the Asian section where they have tamari and soy sauce, they also have minced garlic that you can take a big spoonful of mixed in your salad dressing. I was also blending the pumpkin seeds until they were ground and putting that in the salad dressing so you barely tasted it um, and it would go all over the salad and I was having that every single day. I was also having a little bit of mango um, for adrenal and cortisol health. I'm still doing that for breakfast. Now let's talk coffee. Um, coffee is a sensitive topic for many people because we all love our coffee, me included. Something with coffee when you get it out and about that you have to be aware of. A lot of coffee beans are moldy and a lot of coffee shops do not use high quality coffee and they're also not cleaning their machines very well. So getting coffee out is a a high likely source of mold, I would say. With that said, I have a coffee next to me right now. Like I'm not perfect. I try not to do it as much as I used to. But also keep in mind that a lot of places are pouring hot coffee into plastic and then you have microplastics in your system, which are just going to exasperate your pre-existing issues. So coffee is something that I pretty much got rid of on my acne journey and replaced with this, which has become my newfound love. And you guys have probably seen in my story every single day. It's called Organo King Coffee. You can order it on Amazon. I will link it in the description. You spell Organo O-R-G-A-N-O King Coffee. It's basically instant coffee that is completely mold free and also is made of Arabica coffee beans and contains Ganderma lucidium spore powder, which has great benefits for the immune system and is overall anti-inflammatory. Also, you only absorb eight milligrams of caffeine per packet, which I love because I can have tons of them a day. And I do try to cut my caffeine before like two or three, but this is such a low amount of caffeine and still tastes really freaking good. Like I've had girls in the office be really skeptical of my organo coffee and then I have them try it and they actually love it. I do two packets in a mug, hot water, and then I cool it down, add some ice. It's delish and I feel like safe drinking it, you know? Like I really decreased the amount of coffee I was getting at coffee shops and I think it helped massively. They're also really easy to travel with because it's instant coffee packets and all you need in a hotel room is um, a kettle and you just pour hot water over it. So coffee solution. Let's talk skincare and makeup products. Now, firstly, I'd like to say I think so many people focus on the makeup and skincare of it all as if this is like the thing that's gonna move the needle. And while I think it's like, necessary and the final push to healing you got to do the internal work first so what I did at the beginning was I went through every single product that I use on my skin my hair my body makeup remover toothpaste everything and I ran it through a website that was given to me by Nicola at Pacific Touch New York City she's awesome she reached out to me and I have to say on this acne journey I was quite transparent about it on TikTok and Instagram and I had such an outpouring of support from women and it took 10 years to get here, but I really have to say, I feel so supported in this and I have to say thank you to everyone who reached out to me. Nicola from Pacific Touch sent me a website. It is cosdna.com, C-O-S-D-N-A.com. I'll also put this in the description. This is gonna be a description heavy episode, guys. Um, and I ran every product through that website, I copy and pasted the ingredients into the analyze cosmetics section and looked for acne ingredients on the three to five scale. Anything between three and five, I got rid of and replaced. Even toothpaste, hair care, everything. And the great thing about that website is you can also see clean options as well. I keep using the word clean. I want to emphasize clean does not mean acne safe. I think a lot of skincare products, a lot of makeup products claim they're clean. That doesn't mean it doesn't have poor clogging ingredients. So keep that in mind. If you want info on good acne safe makeup, go to Emily Morrow's Instagram page and check out her highlights. She has an acne check mark, X mark highlight where you can see good options. Um, she also has an Amazon storefront showing acne safe options. Just a few brands that I can think of that are acne safe, Priya, Merit, some of the products, not all, Alima, 
an RMS. I love the RMS foundation. And they also have this like glow sunscreen that I use every day that's like bronzy and I put it under everything. In terms of skincare, I use a few things. I love Pacific Touch skincare out of New York City. I love their sheet masks. The hydrating sheet mark mask is amazing. I also love Clear Stem's Acne Safe skincare line. I feel like anything from there is trustworthy and safe. You guys know I work with them on the podcast, but this is not sponsored. I loved them before anyway. I also love this product called Element. It's spelled E11 Element. It's the Hypochlorous Acid Face skin spray and I bring it to the gym or horseback riding basically anytime I sweat and if I don't have the opportunity to clean my face right away I will spray that because it kills bacteria so I keep that with me everywhere I go I also ice roll my face every morning for inflammation I also get regular extractions and facials when I can I will say they're not like enjoyable facials. They're not like super relaxing because when you have active acne, the goal is to just get it out and, you know, do that regularly. By regularly, I mean like every three weeks or so. Um, Although I will say I have struggled finding estheticians in LA um, that are nice. (laughs) So I'm going to put that out there. I'm still looking. So let me go. Let me know, guys. Um... I also went through everything in my house, including laundry detergent, hand soap, etc. There are so many toxins, guys, in everything. If I've learned anything from this podcast, it's that everything has fragrances and stuff that's inflaming our skin and our gut and our endocrine system. So we only use branch basics in my house and on our clothes. It's super simple ingredients, no toxins or fragrances. Um, It's like pretty much baking soda and water and vinegar I think with a couple essential oils maybe if that so check them out again this is not a sponsored episode but I do love that brand I avoid using anything with fragrances including scented candles car air fresheners perfume I even made my husband stop wearing his Lalabo cologne because I put my head on his body and I don't want to smell that and have my endocrine system disrupted so he doesn't quite get it but I think I told him like you're giving me acne and he chilled out on the Lalabo so that's good okay let's talk additional lifestyle and therapy support these are kind of like added extras that have helped me but aren't fully necessary and maybe aren't as easy to access but I wanted to mention them sauna and cold plunge two to four times a week now I feel so blessed to have my own sauna and ice plunge in my yard it's been a goal of mine for years and years and I'm in there minimum two times a week I think that really helps detox the skin uh lower inflammation clear out the liver um, of any toxins an added bonus when you get in the sauna oh and by the way I should mention if you don't have access to a sauna you can buy a sauna blanket fee actually has one from higher dose um, that I gifted her and she's been using it every day. So you can get sauna blankets on Amazon and things like that. So I would check that out. You can just lay in it while you watch TV, detox a little bit. Um, before you get in the sauna, put some castor oil, make sure it's in a dark bottle glass and it's cold pressed, put it on your liver, which is on the upper right hand side of your body near your rib cage. And that will help your liver detox while you're sweating. You can also do a castor oil pack at night um you need a wrap and you need the castor oil you can order all of that on amazon and i've done a couple of those at night and it really really is helpful um i know it looks weird and it sounds weird but if you're trying to cleanse the liver it's fantastic iv drips um and injections for glutathione glutathione helped me a lot during this journey exercise i think is always important like at the core of it i think a lot of my acne was coming from internal stress and living in fight or flight which i'm still working on but i think the more i work on it the clearer my skin gets getting outside and getting sunshine on the eyes first thing in the morning for cortisol this was quite literally just this was quite literally prescribed to me by emily and has been really helpful tracking blood sugar for spikes it wasn't mind-blowing to me because I do eat a primarily high fat high 
protein diet. Um, but I found that the cherries spiked my blood sugar. And I know that if you're going to have an alcoholic beverage, it's better to have fat and protein beforehand to prevent that spike. So keep that in mind. De-stressing, having a ritual with meditation, journaling, deep breathing, finding a way to wind down, down at night. Believe it or not, our stress has a massive impact on our skin. And I have found that every time I'm in a stressful patch of my life, it has a huge, huge impact. Another thing I want to mention with my diet is, although I wouldn't call myself a strict carnivore, I definitely simplified my entire diet. Um, for the most part, I eat red meat that's grass-fed, grass-finished, sourced from a ranch, farmer's market, whatever it may be. Um, I do eat turkey and chicken as well. And I have avocado. I have a couple vegetables here and there, carrots, a little bit of salad, but I really focus on the protein as my main part of the meal. I also have berries, a little bit of mango and the cherries, as I mentioned. So I'm kind of eating a paleo, somewhat keto diet that's a little bit carnivore inspired. And I have seafood about once a week now. I was having salmon almost once a day at some point and farm raised salmon is one of the leading foods that can have parasites. So if you are trying to clear your skin or detox, highly recommend not eating seafood that that frequently, which is hard because I love sushi, I love seafood, but keeping it to once a week has helped immensely. And I know this diet might sound restrictive, but I have to say I am really enjoying it. I feel so satiated. It's not a it's not a calorie thing for me. And I've said that before. I think I probably eat more calories than most people because my food is very calorie dense. It's really about the ingredients. Um, and I will start incorporating more now that I feel I'm in a better place. But at the place I was in when my lab work was so, so bad and my gut health was struggling, this was the diet that really helped me. And I've really found that the less plants I ate, the better my skin looked. And I know everyone's different, but that's what worked for me. And I wanted to mention that here. I know this all sounds like a lot and I was overwhelmed at first too, but the more I started incorporating these habits, the more it became a lifestyle and the easier it got. I really found ways of incorporating things in my pre-existing habits. For example, putting the chlorophyll drops in my greens I found ways of habit stacking and making my life easier or even adding the raw garlic to my salad dressing. Order the pill organizer, put it in your schedule, make it a part of your routine. It is an undertaking, but if you're consistent, you will see results. I cannot believe how much I improved my blood work just after a few months. Like I really took everything Emily said and applied it as consistently as I possibly could and I have seen dramatic improvements in my blood work, my skin, my health in general. All of us have different levels of sensitivities and our bodies have different ways of showing us something is wrong. For me, it was acne. For someone else, it's stomach issues or even yeast infections. One thing that got me through my acne journey was considering it a blessing that my skin was telling me something was wrong. And I mentioned that before, but I want to say it again because it really did help me get through most people don't even know what's happening in their own bodies and they have years of compounding issues that show up later. I had an affirmation that I would say to myself every time I looked in the mirror when my acne was at its worst because I know how hard it can be to wake up and just nitpick your entire face and feel like you can't even see your own skin. I would say I am grateful for the messages my skin is sending me. My skin is healing. My skin is doing its best. So if you're having acne right now, try saying daily affirmations to yourself and try to know that good is coming and your skin will clear up, I promise. And who knows, I could have a horrible breakout tomorrow, um, but this is the most consistently clear I've ever been. And I really wanted to share this info with you guys because I know what it's like. And I've been through years and years and years and years of trying absolutely everything and it's exhausting and emotionally taxing. So 
I love you guys so, so much. Thank you for listening to this episode and for supporting the show in general. Hopefully there was some helpful information in there for you all. If you wanna see more acne content, make sure you follow me on Instagram and TikTok. I talk a lot about acne there and I will have all the products and websites and helpful things I mentioned in the description of this episode make sure you hit the subscribe button if you haven't yet. I have new episodes every single Monday. I don't want you to miss one and I will see you next time. Bye.